One of the nicest presents Paddington ever received was a torch given to him by Mr. Gruber. He used up several batteries reading under the bedclothes and only came out when he reached the end of a chapter or ran out of air. He also began learning the Morse code in case he ever had an emergency in the night. And it was while he was practicing it one evening that he had a sudden shock. Every time he flashed the torch, he received the same signal back again. He tried the first three letters of his name. P, A, D. Dit, da, da, dit, dit, da, da, dit, dit. It was all very strange. The light seemed to be coming from the direction of Mr. Brown's greenhouse, and it definitely needed investigating. In the morning, when it wasn't quite so dark. The next day, Paddington was up bright and early. Thinking the matter over, it seemed a good chance to kill two birds with one stone and test his disguise outfit at the same time. According to the label on the box, it was exactly the same as was used by Feathers Locke, the famous detective. By the time he'd finished, he felt sure no one could possibly recognize him. Ah, there you are, Paddington, called Mrs. Brown. I was wondering where you'd got to. Paddington? No, I'm not Paddington. I'm Feathers Lock. Yes, dear, but I should hurry up. Your bacon's getting cold. Paddington looked most upset as he made his way to Mr. Brown's greenhouse. It was bad enough having his disguise penetrated so early on in the case, but looking around, he decided there was also a definite shortage of clues. Apart from a few earwigs and a large marrow, it was almost bare. He consulted his instructions once again. Feathers Lock was a great believer in taking fingerprints. He even included some special powder in his outfit for that very purpose. Looking at Mr. Brown's marrow, Paddington felt it ought to have some very good prints on it indeed, and he lost no further time in getting down to work. Talking of marrows, said Mr. Brown at dinner that night, it's hard to believe, but someone's been inside the greenhouse and taken my special prize one. That's strange, said Mrs. Brown. I found an enormous marrow on the lawn this morning. I thought you'd put it out for me. You don't mean, well, not, this isn't it, my prize marrow. It was a special out-of-season one I was entering for a show. All eyes turned to Paddington. He seemed to be acting very strangely. That was my best clue we've been eating, he exclaimed. It was covered in fingerprints. I think I've suddenly gone off stuffed marrow, said Jonathan. Oh, it's all right, said Paddington. I checked most of them. They're nearly all my own paw marks. I expect I made them when I carried it out of the greenhouse. The Browns watched in silence as Paddington crossed to the window and peered through the glass. The thing is, said Mr. Brown, why? Because someone keeps signalling from the greenhouse, Mr. Brown, said Paddington excitedly. They were doing it last night. And they're doing it again tonight. Look. Dit. Da. Dit. Da. That's not someone in the greenhouse, said Jonathan. That's the reflection on the glass from your own torch. The reflection from my own torch, repeated Paddington, hardly able to believe his ears. What are you doing now, asked Judy. I'm sending another message, said Paddington. An important one. Dit, 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 da, 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 dit, dit, dit. That means SOS in Morse code. It's for emergencies. It's short for help. I'm in trouble again. Uh -huh.